Hi, everybody. And uh, as you can see, it's Christmas time and I'm sitting here at the fireplace uh, with all the um, decorations around me. So, oh, look, hang on. Has he arrived yet? No, I'm not sure. And he only will be arriving if you've been a good boy and a good girl or whatever other genders they pretend that there are. Anyway, everybody, very much. Uh, you're very welcome here. Uh, for what is actually going to be our final show of this year. Uh, there will be a live podcast uh, tomorrow night, uh, so you can ch check us out, check, check that out then. Look forward to talking to everybody then. Have a big Christmas party tomorrow night. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we've got, I promised you we were going to have a chat about the Apollo program, the moon landings, all of that. And there's no better man than the guy I'm going to bring on in a second by popular request. Now, uh, I'll explain when he comes on. We've had a few technical issues again. Uh, I'd, uh, but John is John Hamer is in the background, and we will be bringing John in in a second. Oh. So listen, for the final time of the year, I just want to bring up our great uh, sponsors, uh, Quantum Hypno, our, my friend Sarah Jane Smith at Quantum Hypno. And we're going to play Sarah's uh, little ad. And then we are going to get into the main, the main event. So, QAD. I work with the greatest, most powerful force in the universe. It can help you with anything such as mental, emotional, and physical trauma. This beautiful, healing, loving energy can be harnessed and fully integrated through the miracle of hypnosis. Why spend years trying to improve your life and affect change while this life-changing therapy takes just one session? It has such an enormous impact on people's lives. It can remove any addiction in an instant because we find the source of the problem. Your life has a purpose. My mission is to bring this knowledge and awareness to you today. There's never been a better time to reach your highest potential and be the best that you can be. So what are you waiting for? Now's the time to make your dreams a reality. Expand your mind and your heart in just one session. There you go, uh, Quantum Hypno. Do hit the click so that uh, Sarah gets to uh, feel that we are supporting her. We all have to support each other. And uh, also, by the way, don't forget our good friends from uh, from Monday night, Just Stop T-shirts. Remember our friends, Just Stop Following the Narrative? There you go. When you go over to my davidvance.net, you'll be able to click through and, uh, and see all the stuff that the guys uh, have to offer you over there as well. Some some pretty cool uh, t-shirts, I have to say. Um, I, I made an exception on Monday night and wore it, as you can see. Uh, well, because of the nature of the season, I'm a wee bit more formally dressed. Now, uh, okay, Kevin Rowland says, if, if NASA is going to go back to the moon, who will make the landing craft now that Blue Peter has gone? Kevin Rowlands, how can you be so cynical? Everyone knows we went to the moon. Or did we? Well, listen, as I say, it's great pleasure. This, uh, uh, let's, let's bring John into the studio now. Uh, we have had problems with the, John's video, so John's going to be doing this audio. audio. So what you have to do is uh, you have to listen to him, listen to John. So, John, you're very welcome on to this uh, special pre-Christmas show. Right. Okay, John, have you got your mic muted or not? Because I can't hear you. Can you hear me, David? I yes. Can. Yeah, yeah, I can. I can hear you. The, the, I can hear you. Yeah. Um, so, can, John, John we're still pretty um, But there you go. Yeah, I know. I know. Listen, uh, just imagine you're on the moon, okay? Imagine you're on the moon, and this is a lunar connection we've got. So, John, let, let, let's try and get into it here because everyone wants to know. Everyone knows, John. We, Of course, we went to the moon. We saw it on TV. We saw Apollo 11 land in the Sea of Tranquility all those decades ago. Mind you, we never went back after 1972. So, John, is that what happened? Over to you. Uh, no, no, not at all. Hi, David. Thanks for inviting me back on. It's good to be back. Yeah, 
Yeah. Um, if I keep getting lost in the uh, in the ether somewhere, I do apologise. Um, totally yeah. out of my control. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean NASA. I mean, let's start with NASA. It's pop. You know, NASA, the, the acronym is popularly said to stand for never a straight answer. And this, this is very true. They're constantly being caught out lying, bending the truth, answers to, to, to questions that they know will incriminate. Long years ago, researching mm -hmm. NASA and the Apollo crew discovered that everything they've been down the years and the decades consists of some kind of subterfuge ranging from minor deceit to mind-boggling deceptions. Am I coming across okay, David? Yep, keep going, John. Yeah, I'm listening. Yeah, that's okay. Keep going. Are you, are you... Okay, great, great. Now, the moon landings, allegedly the greatest feat ever accomplished by humankind. And yep. sad to say is actually an elaborate Hollywood style production that cost the American taxpayer around $30 billion in 1960s money and around a quarter of a trillion in current scandal that NASA has constructed this money generating machine composed, composed of lies, taxpayer derives absolutely no benefit whatsoever from NASA's existence and alleged contributions to the overall human knowledge pool. Um, absence of any other sources to verify their often outrageous claims, um, you know, despite irrefutable evidence that NASA, NASA is absolutely nothing more than an elaborate financial sponge and a peddler of ridiculous pseudoscience. Um, and to further muddy the waters, NASA was actually founded by Satan worshipping occultists and black magicians. And that's not idle speculation or wild exaggeration on my part. It's just a simple fact. NASA is a military dash Hollywood dash pseudo scientific satanic cartel whose true aim is to use a group of unseen individuals by developing and deploying this pseudo scientific technology and methodology that they have. And hiding of its yeah. true origins in the first place and the cast of characters that had and still has. Yeah. A massive influence, um, you know. So, um, you know, I, for those who are not aware, although they weren't the actual official founders of NASA, there were five individuals who were actually mooted the idea and who actually set the ball in motion. And these names, probably most people have heard of at least. Uh, some of them, probably all, all of them, uh, driving force behind the, the, the beginnings of NASA, and that was the head of the Jet, Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Alistair Crowley, who, who was a big mate of Jack Parsons. I'm sure most people have heard of Alistair, allegedly the wicked, wicked by the name of L. Ron Hubbard, who was the founder of the pseudo-religion Scientology. And Walt Disney. Walt Disney. Disney was involved as well, as was Werner von Braun, the uh, the ex-Nazi rocket scientist who was very prominent in the um, in the uh, in the moon landings project. Um, yeah. So yeah, what do they all have in common? Well, they were all practicing Satanists. Yes. All practicing Satanists, every single one of them. Um, so you know that kind of gives people. The flavor as to exactly the the background to what we're talking about uh, but i think we're specifically talking about project tonight you know the, the um the the moon landings project if you like and uh, yep. yeah, i'll start with a little quote yep. from a uh, a very interesting man by the name of Adolf Hitler, and I think this is very pertinent. Always a certain force of credibility. 
because the broad masses of a nation are always more easily corrupted in the deeper strata of their emotional nature than contrarily. And thus, in the yeah. Yeah. primitive yeah. simplicity of their minds, they more readily fall victim to the big lie, but would be ashamed to resort to large scale falsehood. It would never even come into their heads to fabricate colossal untruths. And they would not believe that others could have the impudence to distort the truth so infamously. Even though the facts which prove this to be so may be brought clearly to their minds, they will still doubt and waver and will continue to think that there may be some other explanation. For the grossly impudent lie always leaves traces behind it after it has been nailed down. A fact which is known to all expert liars in this world and to all who conspire together in the world how to use falsehood for the basest purposes. And as I said, that was a yeah. quote from Adolf Hitler, and I think and I think that was very pertinent. Yeah. So yeah. So let me come in. Let me come in there or yeah, let me come in. So okay. Shall I just okay. plow on? No, no, I just want to sort of say, John, so, you know, my, my perspective of, of, of what you're talking about is that, uh, I mean, the, the, the sort of the whole sort of Apollo, the, 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 the mission to the moon, that was John F. Kennedy um, sort of was the drive, was the guy who said by the end of the, the decade, we're going to put a man in the, on man in the moon. So I remember that there was, there was, and of course, then he was, he was obviously, yeah, he was uh, assassinated. Um, but we had this whole thing that culminated in July in 1969. Yeah. I remember watching it in my grandmother's house on a black and white TV. And it was just, as I was a young child, John, it was amazing. Couldn't believe it. It's an incredible thing that we'd gone to the moon. And, and, and you know, most people, I think, most normies think, yeah, because we did, because we seen it on TV. But, John, I always say, well, you see Jurassic Park on TV. Do you, do you think that there's dinosaurs wandering, wandering around in, 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 in parts of the world? Well, maybe there are, but, you know, you know what I'm saying? Just because you see something on TV doesn't make it true. But but how were they able to convince everybody, John? <laughs> how, how did they do it? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, how how did the most of the world is convinced the Americans... Well, yeah. Neil well, Armstrong, I mean, first, the moon. Yeah, well, well, yeah, okay, let's get on to that. Well, firstly, I think it's important to keep in mind that there were probably only about 100 people involved in the hoax and subsequent cover-up. Yep. I'm I'm sorry, David. You yeah. broke up, and I didn't catch any of that. I do apologise. Yeah, I'll I'll I'll, t I'll tell you what we'll do, John, because this the, this is a important is a good topic. This one, and it deserves better than this. So I, I think what we will do. Is, what we'll do is we will. Uh, do a yeah. subsequent recording. Um, we'll not. We we'll find a different way to do it. This isn't going to work because it's too disjointed. You, you um, th th there is an issue, J John. It's at your end. It's not at the studio end, but the studio might be causing it. I can't be certain. But what I thought we should. I think what we'll do is we we'll yeah. cut this one, John. I, I think, wish you. I, I don't think for some reason, uh, and this only just happened. I'd, I'd, I yeah. don't think my computer. Like no, it, it's stream yard for whatever no, reason, it, and I don't understand it. Um, it, it, it uh, doesn't to, to, uh, to jam up with stream yard. Yeah, I, I think what we we'll do is, John, we'll 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 we'll, we'll wish you happy Christmas. I'm going to keep going here, uh, John. You can go and enjoy the rest of your evening. Don't worry about this. We'll figure out a way, whether it's using another recording mechanism other than StreamYard, and we'll bring you back and we can get this done. Okay, John. But I'm going to have to cut it there because it's just not working. Okay. Bye for now, John. Bye. Right, folks. Right. Well, ooh, that was, this is, Jed, this is where you earn your spurs, you see. So here we are. And for the second time, the moon landing ones hasn't worked. 
and uh, I apologize to everyone who was super duper excited to, uh, to, to hear John. You could tell he's very knowledgeable about this. I mean, I do. I'll just stick on the moon landings for a minute or two. Uh, I, I do remember watching Apollo 11 land on the moon. And I remember thinking it is amazing. There you go. One small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. Do you remember that? And do you remember, do you remember that then what they did? This is where I, where were my spider senses back in 1969? Uh, of course, most of you probably aren't alive, weren't alive back in 1969. But he phoned, he then, what did they do? They phoned, they phoned Richard Nixon in the White House. What? You, you phoned from the, the moon, you, you phone to the White House. I mean, there's parts of Northern Ireland I can't even phone, such as the crap signal we get. But back in 1969, they were able to do that. Wasn't that incredible? And if anyone had been thinking about it, we should have realized that's weird. How did they do that then exactly? And then there's so many anomalies. Once you start digging into the moon landings, so many anomalies in terms of uh, what they were claiming versus what was uh, what, what was actually happening. Leslie says uh, she remembers and believed it all. Leslie, we all did. That's why I wanted John on because we, we were all conditioned to believe this. This was, it wasn't the first big psyop because I would suggest to you that the Titanic slash Olympic was maybe the first big psyop of that century. Um, you know, so... Uh, Top Cat. Hi, Top Cat says, I was born in September 1969. That was a giant leap for mankind, uh, Top Cat. But yeah, so look, we had, um, uh, you, you know, we, we absolutely were convinced this had happened. But then here's the weird thing. So it went from 1969 to 1972, the moon landings. And there was one, of course, where I think it was Apollo 13, which went wrong and whatnot. But, but then in 1972, it just stopped. We stopped. And then we weren't able to go back again to the moon for, what's that, 1972. That's 50 years ago, more than 50 years ago now, because we, we couldn't, we didn't have the technology to do it. Well, think about this. Think about this. How on earth, what other areas of technology do you know that in 2023, we don't have the tech that we had in 1972? Can you remember what TVs looked like in 1972? Or radios. There were huge blooming things with diodes and stuff in them. You know, uh, there's absolutely uh, no way that we had the technology then and then we weren't able to do it anymore. No, no, not, no. Uh, it's just not plausible that. Um, so I got to say, I kind of, uh, I suppose during COVID, really, like a lot of us, we had spare time in our hand and uh, we, um, we, we started to look into these things. And once, once you recognize that, oh, maybe not everything they told us about COVID was the truth, and spoiler alert, none of it was, well, maybe that's true about other things as well. Hence the Titanic, hence the assassination of John F. Kennedy, hence the so-called moon landings. Uh, yeah, here they are. Here's, uh, I'm not sure who these three are, actually. I think that's uh, Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong, and Michael Collins. That was the crew of Apollo 11. Uh, that I've just mentioned, and they were the ones who, yeah, the first first men on the moon, and it was a huge PR coup for the United States. And um, for me, if people say, "Well, how, how do you know? How do you know they didn't go there?" Well, I'll tell you how they didn't go there, for a very simple reason. Have you heard of the Van Allen belts? These are the sort of huge uh, radiation belts that sort of enter sort of planetary status, uh, uh, radiation belts. Uh, and if you're going through those Van Allen belts and you haven't got, you know, like a meter thick steel, you're going to be fried. You're going to be fried. You're going to be like an egg when you arrive in the moon, right? Fried egg on the moon. So, so how did they, how did they get through the Van Allen belts exactly? Did you see the, like, I don't know if Jed can bring up a picture. I always laugh at the picture of the moon land, but you know, the, the lunar module on the moon, it always amuses me. If you look at it, and as somebody pointed out earlier, you know, look at it, look at the moon buggy. It's such so laughable. But the, the lunar sort of vehicle that landed on the moon itself, um, it's like made of bacon foil. It's like something they would have made during, uh, you know, a Blue Peter episode. 
you know, today, boys and girls, we're going to show you how you can make your own lunar module. Yeah. And it's about as plausible as something that Blue Peter would have made as well. But instead, of course, when they first landed, we get the black and well, in my TV, it was black and white. But obviously, there was some color TVs around back then. But uh, here's a picture of the moon landing. Look at that. That, that flimsy little vehicle was going to apparently make it all the way through the Van Allen belts and all the way down to the surface of the moon. And uh, I mean, I, the thing is, and this is what I hope John would have been able to talk about. Uh, th there is a, a train of thought that suggests that it was the filmmaker Stanley Kubrick, Stanley Kubrick, who was actually uh, producing the, the moon landing videos. And he did that for, for those three years or so, from 69 to 72. And then that was it knocked on the head. And, you know, no one else has gone to the moon, no other astronauts. That's weird, isn't it? So the Russians didn't. Yeah, here's a, <laughs> here is a much more accurate, uh, moon, <laughs> here, a much more accurate lunar module here. There you go. That is uh, certainly more plausible than the one that uh, they actually pretending that uh, went there. But uh, Stanley Kubrick was the, I believe, or it was one of those involved in producing this PR coup for the United States uh, against the Soviet Union. But the Soviet Union never got their ass, their, their cosmonauts to the room, uh, to the moon. China hasn't got to the moon. Um, India, did, did, they, did they land a, a, a vessel on the moon earlier this year? I did laugh at it when you saw it. It was uh, hilarious stuff. The Indian, uh, mind you, no, no human beings on it. No human beings on it. So it's weird, isn't it? So the only time human beings went to the moon was from 1969 to 1972. And then that was it. That was it. Meanwhile, Elon Musk's talking about, oh, he's going to go to Mars. He's going to, he's going to send men to Mars and, uh, and beyond, infinity and beyond. But uh, we'll have to see about that one. I don't think... I don't think they had the technology to do it back in the late 60s, to be honest. I don't think um, they have the technology to do it now, but mainly because of those massively strong radiation, Van Allen radiation belts and, and also the inhospi inhospitality of the, um, the, for example, the, 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 the moon itself. I mean, uh, it's not a, it's not, uh, this is, uh, this is uh, the lunar mod. I actually, um, I've not been in a lunar module, but I have been in uh, the actual, the, you know, yeah, Top Cat says it's shocking people believe that. Yeah, but they all did. Everyone bought into the lunar. Hands up anybody on any stream who think who, who didn't. Because I can say, I, I can say with 100% confidence that when I watched the moon landing, I, I know I've told you this story before, but it's the truth. Uh, a very elderly lady came to visit our house and I as a very excited young boy was saying did you see did you see the, the men in the moon and she laughed at me and she laughed at me and she said they haven't gone to the moon they haven't gone up to the, to the moon David and, and and I thought she was just a silly old lady she wasn't she had more wisdom than than most of us uh Chris Davy says the Russian and Chinese had already worked out that we, we they couldn't. Yeah, of course, Chris, they couldn't. Yeah. And David Meller here says, whenever you're in the underground in London, you don't have any signal. Well, that's a very good point. I was, and Jed can affirm to this, I was in the London underground just a week ago. And, gee, you know, I, I was going to say it's like, it's like the moon. But, of course, you can get signal on the moon, apparently. But you can't get signal on the, uh, the London underground to Notting Hill. I can tell you that. You definitely can't get that. So, uh None of it makes sense. None of it makes sense. Uh, and uh, it, it was just a very, very effective um, psyop. And, you know, back then we didn't have we didn't have social media. So no one could go on Twitter and say, I don't think they landed on the moon. You couldn't get that back then. You know, now we've got, you know, the minute anything happens, there's always somebody in social media saying, I don't think that happened. And maybe they're right, maybe they're wrong. Who knows? But uh, but we didn't have that ability to do that. City Troll says they believed because it happened. Well, City Troll, once again, I've been frustrated in my attempt to get John on to talk about this. But uh, you're welcome to your, you're absolutely 
absolutely entitled to your view that it happened. Your view that and from 1969 to 72, they had the technology which they then lost and they weren't able to do it for 50 years. Yeah, that's really plausible. Yeah, really, really plausible. Re and I'm waiting for your answers on the Van Allen belt. How did they get through that as well? In 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 a, in a vehicle, which I think the skin of the, um, the Apollo craft, it was only a couple of inches thick, if that, covered in, covered in, 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 in bagel foil. So uh, yeah, uh, Top Cat says they were brainwashing people back then, just like today, pure evil. Well, this is the bigger point, actually. This is maybe the most important point that, you know, once you start to, David, somebody to party tomorrow, that it was a fake. Oh yeah, we'll tell them, well, don't worry, we'll get party tomorrow night on this one. And in fact, actually, no, no, they've got too much to do tomorrow night, right? Um, they've been faking it ever since. The apps and on 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 almost every front. I mean, who believes what you see in 2023? Hands up, because not mine. I don't believe much of what I'm told. I'm not saying some things don't happen; they do, but I I, I don't unequivocally just go along with whatever people are telling me, uh, and especially when it's big events, you know. Like, like even for example, you know the whole the whole Ukraine thing. I, I question lots of it. The whole Gaza Israel thing. I question parts of that as well. Um, I question loads of, of of everything. Yes, Leslie, your hands not up. My hands not up. Um, the truth of the matter is that we've been psyoped by the dark forces for a very long time. Leslie says here on the YouTube that she believes nothing. That's about right. If you believe nothing then you are exercising critical thinking. And that's the thing that, see, that's the thing that went out the window for most people from 2020. <clears throat> most people believed, oh, the scary, this scary invisible virus that we can't see, but it's definitely real because the authorities tell us it's real, right? The authorities are telling us this virus is real and it's super duper deadly. It's like the Spanish flu. Remember, do you remember that? We were instructed and told to go along with that. Guess what? Most people did. You mightn't have. I didn't. But most people did. So when it comes to events like the moon landings, is it a surprise that nearly everybody went with it? And everyone, though, I'll tell you one of the most interesting people to listen to in this one. And that is um, Buzz Aldrin. Now, my, uh, as you know, Neil Armstrong was the first man on the, on the moon. Uh, and uh, Michael uh, Buzz Aldrin was the second man. If you've listened to some of the very peculiar interviews that he's done over the years, it makes you think. Uh, in some on some of those interviews, he seemed to suggest that they hadn't gone to the moon himself. Now, why might that be? And why would Neil Armstrong, for example, uh, I think I, I think I'm right in saying I don't want to libel him, but he's dead anyway. But I think he turned to alcohol. What do you think? What do you think it might be? These guys were chosen for these missions, not to go to the moon because they didn't go to the moon. They were chosen for these missions because they were tough. They were tough minded guys. If you're going to lie about something for the rest of your life, lie about something that never happened. Here's. <laughs> Here's Buzz. Well, you see, to me, the more credible figure in this photograph is, uh, is Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> I think Buzz Lightyear is slightly more plausible than Buzz Aldrin, in the, insofar as at least we all know Buzz Lightyear was a fiction. Buzz Aldrin was a real man, but I think Buzz Aldrin, along with Neil Armstrong, they suffered, as did other of the so called um, uh, Apollo astronauts. They suffered decades and decades of having to keep up the fiction oh yeah 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 we definitely went there oh yeah we could see the earth little blue orb oh yeah yeah it was the moon it was amazing man there was no gravity all this stuff you know imagine having to lie for 50 years uh yes jo jason trussell here says watch bart sabrell's video i have i have absolutely watched uh uh bart sabrell's video and everyone should watch it if you haven't seen it um uh you see actual nasa footage yeah yeah, that's why as I say, a, a, a funny thing happened on the way to the moon. Jason, I think, is a, is, is a book that he wrote about it as well, or maybe that was another video. But I just think that, um, you, you know, I mean, 
if you look now at some of the movies that they produce, uh, you know, the science fiction-y movies, and you get people, and they're all in space, and the, you know, you're in their space because they're going like this in the back. It's they're not in space, right? We all know that. This is just CGI effects, special effects, whatever you want to call them, right? That's what it is. And in 2023, most of us probably, you know, you can enjoy a movie and it looks like, oh, they've gone into space, but they haven't. They haven't gone anywhere. They haven't gone anywhere beyond, you know, the uh, film studio. Um, but uh, uh, it's still. It still fooled a lot of people, including our, goal, our good friend, City Troll, who, God love him, still thinks that they went. Here we go. Uh, this uh, NASA admits moon travel is impossible. Yeah. I mean, uh, John started to talk about it there. And I'm, again, my apologies for the sound. It was awful. But, I mean, NASA itself, as you know, NASA had its origins. There's Sibril.com. Go there. Check that out. For um uh, about uh, the Van Allen belts, all that stuff there. I mean, it's all, I mean, I, I think, honest to God, folks, I think we are right on all these issues. I really do. And I know they immediately nail us as, you're a conspiracy theorist. Remember the CIA and the FBI said that about people whenever they said back in 63, oh, we think John F. Kennedy was assassinated. Uh, but it was, it was an organized hit job. Uh, well, we were right about that. And I think we're right about this, what happened in 1969. Uh, yes, I see some of the comments. Uh, Top Cat says, they must have been laughing at the world. They have to meet God like all corrupt humans. Well, as I was going to say, NASA deployed, as John um, was saying, John Hamer was saying, uh, all kinds of strange people, not least um, some of the Nazis' top rocket scientists, and that, that's an observable fact. YouTube, don't come at me at this one. Uh, matter of fact, uh, the Operation Paperclip is where they, um, uh, they 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 got them across. They got them out of Germany. They got them working uh, in the States. And they got them, if some of them went into the, uh, the Apollo project. So it's interesting, you know, Nazis and then, oh, yeah, NASA. Hmm. And, uh, and, and then, of course, it all went away. Well, the moon landings, they all went away in 1973. Apparently, you couldn't go to the moon from 73 on. That's weird. Uh, but NASA continues, of course, and in, in its current uh, incarnation, it is um, pushing the whole climate, my climate boiling, my, you know, global boiling, climate change, all this stuff, producing all kinds of uh, uh, falsifications. Jason says people forget that the Apollo 1 crew uh, were murdered. Uh, Gus, a guy called Gus Greesom was murdered because he wouldn't lie to the people. That said, you see, Jason, to be selected for Apollo, it wasn't about your ability to pilot stuff, although some of them were pilots. It wasn't about that. It was about were you going to be strong enough to lie to everybody? And as John uh, Hamer was saying there, the bit that we could hear, there was only about 100 people in on the Apollo program. So... If you're going to have, uh, you know, uh, John says, John, our good friend, John. Hi, John. Thanks for being here. Says no NASA rockets have gone any have anyone on board. They just go up about five miles or so and fall into the ocean. Yeah. Well, here's here's one for you. Is, do you, Here's one that uh, I haven't tackled before. See the space station. See the space station. Do we think the space station is what they say it is? You know, because you can see it. I mean, you can through a telescope see this thing moving around now maybe it's because that's inner space not outer space and they're just about able to manage that uh, but if so isn't that weird so humans ultimate achievement for the last 50 years has been to put this inner space orbital um, station right in place that we've been able to manage that but 1969 we go to the moon like it, it, the, the logical extension of ha, had it been actually an honest thing, which it wasn't, by now we'd be in Mars, we'd be in Jupiter. Now, of course, they have told us, yeah, well, we've sent unmanned vehicle, vessel or vehicles out that far. Maybe they have, maybe they haven't. But my issue is, is to do with humanity. It's to do with man. Did ma Can man go beyond the boundaries of this earth? And I've got to say, I don't think we can. I don't think we're even ordained to. I don't even think we'd want to. 
uh, certainly if you want to stick up uh, satellites and stuff that's all fine and if they can go off and give us views of other planets that's all fine but it's one thing to have a, a satellite or a, a, an unmanned spacecraft because you don't have to worry about us human beings inside the tin can as david bowie uh said back when he was capitalizing on the moon landings as well did you know that by the way david bowie's space oddity came out in 1969 the same year that's when he wrote it in 1969 it was a big hit for him uh but that was capitalizing on the whole you know major tom to ground control and all of that uh it was a it was a definite apollo vibe that uh, Bowie was channeling back in 69. So lots of people, lots of people did very well out of this. I mean, somebody tells the story about, well, uh, someone says, why, why would you need top scientists if you're going to fake it? Uh, well, you see, I would suggest that that's like saying, why would you need top virologists if you're faking the scamdemic? Well, they did fake the scamdemic and all the top scientists were in on it. So that's what I think. Uh, uh, that, um, you know, I think it's entirely plausible to give things authenticity. You bring in the top people, don't you? And uh, so maybe some of them do believe it, actually, George, possibly so. But uh, I think, yes, as Top Cat says, they're all in it together. We, we, we Look, that, that's why we can apply COVID thinking to moon landings. We know that the entire establishment was behind the... Uh, uh, the uh, you know the, the 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 COVID thing, well, it was behind the lunar thing as well. Chris Davy says apparently we can't go higher than seven hundred and fifty miles. That's it. Well, it's a bit like I mean I know some people may or may not believe in the you know the the, the Earth and the, the is is it a globe or is there a canopy and is it all that kind of stuff. All I can say is I've been I've been in Earth many many flights many many places over the years uh, and. Uh, you know, you're, you're only like five miles up and that seems to be our capacity. So I just don't know. That is a true story about Space Oddity, by the way. Uh, I, I was reading some stuff about David Bowie, uh, David Bowie, and uh, all about uh, the origins of Space Oddity. And uh, yeah, he wrote that to essentially seize the moment. And why not? Why not? Uh, it's, a good, it's a good song. But again, again, think of the mythology. Here we have Major Tom in his, uh, you know, and, and you saw it in Ashes to Ashes as well, you know, and again, it's playing up the same thing of as if this is actually a real thing, this notion of manned, uh, manned, manned space travel. I don't think it is, which makes me wonder about Elon Musk because he's really pushing it. So do you think he genuinely thinks it's possible? And I wonder, I mean, I know he's done a lot of stuff, but I'm not sure. Um, yeah, Chris says, even Musk must know that it's a nonsense, hence why his rocket, rockets keep blowing up. But yet, yet, Chris, in 19... Okay, here's one for you. Back, Go back, if, you're, if, if you can remember what cars were like in the late 60s, early 70s. All uh, right, if you can remember them, cars were very primitive things, like they really were. Um, didn't have all the all singing, all dancing tech in them of today. So back then, um, cars were not known for their reliability, and uh, certainly they were not that robust. And if you had an accident in one, you were probably dead. It didn't, didn't have all the safety stuff that we've got all these sort of decades later. So cars are a good example of something which uh, the technology's evolved over the last 50 years. So if you jump into your car today, you know, you'll have all your seat belts and you're going to have all kinds of good things uh, to, to help you on your journey. Um, but you didn't have them back in the 70s, right? But yet we were able to get a, we were able to get men to the moon, right? But we can't do it now, right? Why is that? Why is that? George Orwell has given me some. He's arguing back. Great. I love someone arguing back to me. He says, the top COVID experts weren't listened to. Well... Some of them weren't. No, I agree. I agree. But many were. I mean, put it like this. All the virology institutes pretty much sang off the same uh, same uh, hymn sheet. Uh, I've got uh, Mike O saying here, the moon is a map of the earth. Uh, some great interesting comments there coming along. I, I'm aware of a lot of this stuff, by the way, uh, about the moon itself. 
Um, the only thing about the moon I would say is that it does hang in the sky. And as a child, I was fascinated by the, the constellations, by the stars. And I remember having a telescope when I was only about eight or nine. So right about the time of the moon landings. And, you know, it always fascinated me um, that we, uh, you know, you look up and you see this celestial body, uh, the moon. And uh, I'm sure it's held a fascination for mankind from the beginning of time. I'm sure it has, because it's throughout human recorded history, people talk about the moon, right? So the, the moon, or the thing that we see is the moon anyway, and yes, I'm aware of those conspiracy theories. Um, it's been there for a long time, folks. It's been there as long as mankind, and presumably uh, before we even appeared on this planet, if you if you believe that. So I don't know. I I just sort of think that the um, uh, John John Hamer is very good in this. The detail, the I mean, he brings in other factors like the Satanism, uh, the occult worship. Of some of those involved in the, in the in the in the setting up of the project, and then the fact that the media were a hundred percent behind it. Well, I mean, does that surprise you? Here's a picture of a, a, a story, a, a meteor shower, actually, from the looks of it. Uh, but certainly, sure as hell is in the moon anyway. Um, I, I wonder, did they film at all? I mean, some of these videos I've seen suggest that there were there were, there were particular sites in the United States that the filming took place. And yes, Stanley Kubrick is alleged to have confessed that he was involved in it, but there were perhaps others as well. And uh, wouldn't it be nice to get the truth? But you see, you can't have the truth. Yeah, certainly from a revisionist point of view. So we know, for example, that it wasn't the Titanic that went to the bottom of the ocean. It was the uh, the Olympic. We know that, right? We know that. Um, I'm sure Paddy's not gonna dispute that. So. Uh, and we know JFK, uh, it was a heavy assassination job done on him by his own, by by three-letter agencies and all of that. We know these things. So why is it hard? Why is it so hard for people to accept, well, maybe the moon landings were uh, not all that we thought either. Why is that? Because, you know, I mean, I guess few of you accept that COVID is what we were told. I don't suppose too many of you imagine Ukraine is what we were told are told. And even the Israel, you know, the whole Israel uh, Gaza thing, is that exactly what we're told? I don't think so. And see, this is where the critical mindset gets us to at the end of this year. It gets us to the point where, you know, maybe we never get the truth, Leslie. Maybe we don't. But what we do is we can ask questions. We can challenge. We can sort of say, well, hang on a second. Uh, you know, the, the, the longer I live, the more unsure I am of the things that are presented to me as definitely that happened. That definitely super duper happened. That's going to make me think, no, I don't think it did happen at all, most likely, if that's the case. If I'm being sort of coerced into believing something. Now, you may say, uh, yes, uh, Big Morgan, Lyndon Johnson involved in JFK murder. Uh, there's a really good book on that by... Um, Bill O'Reilly, which I've read on the Lyndon Johnson factor. Uh, Mick O says the filming was done in an old scrapyard. You can see old cars covered under dirt if you zoom in and the pictures of the moon in the background. Ah, so, well, look, I look at nothing. Uh, well, I see, here's a really good comment. It's more comfortable for people to accept the lie. Some people prefer to go with the flow of the majority. This is something that uh, Goebbels understood uh, back in, 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 in those times, and all propagandists have understand this. Basically, see if you're going to tell a lie. Tell a whopper. Tell the biggest lie you can, because people will more likely go with that. If you just give sort of half-truths or you ameliorate it a bit, then people will start to carp about it and say, hang on a second. But uh, people want to believe uh, uh, and and uh, yeah, you know this is something I I I, I was re recording a show for an American friend earlier today, and one of the things that strikes me in is that as people kind of lose their faith in traditional religion, let's say, um, they they then look for um, truth elsewhere, anywhere, a any truth will do, uh, as Jason Donovan might sing it. Uh, and uh, and so 
yeah, I want to believe in the moon landings. Yeah, I totally do want to believe that. Yeah, I want to believe in everything I'm told on all topics, like the thing that happened back in 2001. Because we're on YouTube, I better not mention that. But we need to believe. We need to believe everything, and we certainly mustn't question anything. Because if we question anything, um, then we're shaking our, you know, our Overton window. So as long as we stay within the Overton window, we're all good. We're all fine. We're all normies. We don't get concerned. But it's like, I don't know about you guys, but don't you think that, yes, it's like, it's like, you see, I think a lot of people just live a life where they're dreaming. Um, hang on, George Owens says, hang, hang on, the Titanic didn't sink. No, it did say, no, the Titanic didn't sink. Oh, no, no, of course it not. Of course it didn't. No, the Olympic did. Its sister ship built at the, the year before, uh, 1911, and scuttled in 2012. Uh, and we've explained that in a previous uh, video. You can, uh, I don't know if uh, if Jed's able to bring it up, but we did a, we did a, a really good show on the uh, the Titanic. Uh, but uh, I think if I'm going to, the uh, the Olympic sank. Yeah, that's right, Leslie. It was the Olympic that went down. And, uh, you know, it's funny because I visited the uh, Titanic the Titanic Exhibition Center about six weeks ago or so. And all this, you know, memorabilia to the Titanic. And you would have a heart of stone not to laugh because, of course, it's all fake. It's all fakery. Uh, it's, they should have had it to the Olympic. I mean, I'm. did people die? Of course people died very deliberately, very convenient the way all those. Uh, there you go. Uh, you can see it over on davidvance.net. Uh, we were discussing John... Hamer's excellent book, The Olympic. And back then, our sister, his signal worked really well, and we were able to have a conversation about it. I think the next one, I'll record it another method and put it out. I'll not live stream it, I'll record it. And um, I, I maybe just maybe even put it out as an audio and you can listen. It might be better if we do it that way, maybe not through StreamYard. But yeah, um, comfortable lies, comfortable lies are more acceptable than harsh truths. Or that's the truth of the matter. And that is the truth of the matter. No one, no one wants to know the uncomfortable truth. But then you just think back. If more people have had of had have understood in 2020 that COVID, the whole scamdemic, was a scamdemic, and had they understood the nature of the experimental gene therapies, maybe not as many people would have had damage and stuff uh, from taking such things. It's obviously everyone's individual choice. And yes, all the authorities recommended these things, but I would simply say a critical mind looks at everything and judges everything in its own regard. Not on what, not on what the man in the box said, right? Don't care what the man in the box and the, the TV said. Don't care about him. What do I think? And this is where people need to empower themselves. And that's part of what we're trying to do here, I suppose. We're trying to give you guys, you know, information which you can check, links to things that you can check out. Uh, there's a massive world of things to consider uh, and not just take what you're told as the fate accompli. So, you know, and that's why I've been sort of fascinated by the, uh, the moon landings one, because I, I thought to myself, you know, and I, and I have read into it and I have watched stuff on it myself. I'm not an expert, though, like John, but I know enough to have absolutely convinced me that, um, boy, oh, boy, were we misled. Oh, boy. Uh, it's of Olympian, it's of Olympic proportions, the, uh, you know, the, 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 the lunar landing thing. And, um, you know, the, the, ultimately, the, 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 the killer argument on this one which I would ask anyone to explain is, how come we stopped going in 1972? Hmm? How come? Uh, JFK, RFK, MLK, Lenin, Moon, OFK, Pan Am, yeah, all done by deep state with these. Oh, of course, Jason, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a given, that's a given, uh, that these things are not always as they are portrayed in the media. But you see, the power of the media is also the, the essence of this. Back in 69, we didn't, we only had a couple of TV channels in the UK anyway. Uh, I think we only had two back then, if I'm right. No, right, two. And then we got three. And then ultimately we got four. So, you know, if the BBC and ITV told you something, it was true. 
And if you didn't believe that, what were you going to do? Jump on social media? No, there was no social media. There was no internet. Go down the library and check out books. That's not, that wasn't going to do very much good. So you can understand how for a long time they've got away with these psyops because the technology that, that was there at the time helped them, but it didn't help us. That all changed with the internet. And as the internet's blossomed and bloomed and gone off into a million different places, it's a lot easier for us to, you know, just go and, you know, search, use your search engine, preferably not Google, but whatever, and and, and check out things like, you know, moon landings and or even on YouTube, even on the YouTubes, go and check out some of the stuff there. I think uh, this topic is YouTube friendly, which may prove to be fate, final last words. But, um, you know, the, the fact of the matter is that there is um, uh, lots of information now that we can get that helps us come to our conclusions that we didn't have back then. Back then. In the 1960s, well, I was going to say the world was a more simple place. It wasn't really, but it was the same dark forces, I believe, operating then in the 60s as operate now. So in some ways, you know, the more things change the more things stay the same. It's just that the technology has massively improved. You've got more computing power, my friend, in your mobile phone or whatever you're watching this on, on your computer, than NASA did back in 1969, right? You've got greater computing power than they had, which also then leads to the question, so how come they didn't really have little to no computing power at all, but they were able to first time, first time, Perfect. Uh, go to the moon. No, tr no trouble at all. Big Morgan says, thank God for Rumble. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like if you're looking truth, you won't find it on, uh, say, YouTube, but you will get it in Rumble. You will get it in Odyssey. Uh, you will get it elsewhere. But um, YouTube's a different scenario. So I'm not sure. I, I tried to do this one on YouTube because I thought all of you would be like like to see John and, 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 he, and see him talk about the, uh, the whole uh, mythology behind uh, uh, the Apollo program, the origins of it, you know, how that's mixed into all kinds of manipulations of people, uh, all of that. It, and it, I mean, essentially, it's it's lasted longer than you might think. Like, it's only now that people do come out and say, mm, moon landings, I don't think so. One of the things that surprises me is, if you talk to normies about this, quite a lot of normies are, are almost quite prepared to go, yeah, mm, I wondered about that. But you see, this is where we come into it. Normies think these things, but they won't say them. We say them. So then we get labeled as, oh, you're extreme conspiracy theorists. No, we're not. We're just asking simple questions like how come, for example, they had the technology in 72, but they didn't have it in 2022. How that happened then? Hmm? And as I said at the beginning of this, how come they were able to phone the White House from the moon in 69. <laughs> I mean, I remember, I'll, tell, I'll tell you a quick story. My, my father, um, God rest his soul, was, um, was a telephone operator. He worked for BT back in the day, post office. And he was a telephone operator. So if you wanted to phone someone, basically you would go, your, your call would go to the exchange and the exchange would then direct it to whatever number you were trying to get in contact. That's what it was like back then. So where was the telephone exchange on the moon then? Hmm? I don't remember that. <laughs> or maybe, maybe was it was was it up on the uh, the, 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 the 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 or the orbit orbiting uh, uh, spacecraft? I don't think so. I don't think so. So there is absolutely no way that uh, they phoned they phoned the um, the White House. But it wasn't a great publicity. Yes, Jason, we will bring John back, and I think I'd probably do it as a pre-record rather than a live, and that way I can control things a wee bit better. But, uh, yeah, Leslie says, Last, let's ask Patty. Well, maybe we need to, tomorrow night on the live podcast, if you join me, we need to have this out uh, because uh, I've got, I mean, I don't see any reason why anyone would accept that we went to the, uh, the, to the moon. Yes, Jed, I'll give you 30 seconds at the end. No problems at all. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't think we did it. I think it's a really well accomplished um, psyop. I think when you've got the likes of genius filmmakers like Stanley uh, Kubrick 
uh, then you can, you can achieve all kinds of things. Jason O'Brien says, E.T. phone home. Well, actually, again, I mean, you know, we saw E.T. in the movie, right? Does that mean he existed? We, we did see it. It was on our screens, wasn't it? E.T., the lovable alien, sitting in the front the, the basket on the bike, going up in front of the moon. You'd be filmmakers are able to manipulate all kinds of things, all kinds of things. But the most fundamental thing they manipulate is our emotions. In 2020, they taught us to be afraid. Some of it doesn't. Chris Davis says, what's next, David? You'll be saying the First World War was a flag event. No, it wasn't a flag event, um, but it's not what you think it was, Chris. <laughs> Just wait till we get into 2024. Well, I'll tell you, there, now some of these will not be available on YouTube. I can definitely tell you in 2024. But we will be talking about a, a lot of this. Uh, a lot of this. Here's a conspiracy. JFK was assassinated for his objection to the Demona nuclear power plant. I think he was assassinated for many, many reasons. He made a lot of enemies. Uh, and he was probably, apart from Trump, in the last, what, 60, 70 years, the, the, one of the last presidents, uh, who um, actually tried to kick back against the deep state? So uh, uh, World War One is and World War Two are very problematical to me in a whole lot of ways, uh, and we can we can talk about those things. You know, I mean, maybe maybe you should send you guys <clears throat> tomorrow night should tell me what would you like to have discussed in 2024 because um, you know we've gone through all sorts in the past 12 months. Some of it good, hopefully some of it interesting and uh, entertaining. And at the end of the day, at least if you come here on a on a, on a Monday and Wednesday, uh, you're going to hear um, things that you won't hear on the mainstream, uh, you know, brainwashed media, which, uh, I mean, we're not going to be talking about. Uh, yes, we are going to have a, an end of year roundup review. Uh, we're planning to have that, um, I think it's Thursday week, Chad. We said we would do that, um, but we could do it tomorrow night, whatever. Um, because the point about this is that the clock is, t yeah, Jason says, I lost some great uncles in World War One. So did I, and World War Two as well. So no one denies the terrible loss of human life. Uh, but uh, I think Jack Ruby's real name is probably... Um, I'm trying to think of a good... Uh, I, I, I can't think of it. I don't know. Tell me. Um, uh, what I do know is that JFK was 100% set up to be uh, assassinated and I think that um, uh, we weren't given all the information back then the CIA understood that the way to shut down dissent was to call anybody who questioned what the official party line was to call them a conspiracy theorist and they've been doing that ever since my friends, whether it is the moon landings whether it's 9-11, whether it's whatever, uh, uh, COVID, whatever it is, doesn't matter. And um, there's a narrative. And if you step outside of the narrative, you are a conspiracy theorist, an absolute lunatic, and someone who should be preferably shut up and uh, 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 ignored. Now, Chris Davis informs me here, he's got a nice bottle of red wine ready for tomorrow night. Make sure it's open, Chris, and make sure the wine is per perfectly uh, 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 in optimum drinking condition. Jason tells me that Jack is Jack. Jack Ruby's real name was Jack Jacob Leon Rubenstein. Mm. Wow, very surprise. Uh, so yeah, listen, it's a it's a big bad world, and all we can ever really do here on this channel is put our take on it. And as I said in a different show earlier, all we can try and do is just have an open conversation with you guys. And tell you what we think and you're perfectly welcome to say you're mad you're insane uh, or maybe well you might have something you might have half a point uh top cat says she thinks covid was a really big shock to the world i think it was a big wake up i think covid has woken many of us up for which i am grateful I, i'm very grateful i wouldn't have wanted you know to end my days on this planet still walking around believing every lie that i was ever told now i don't believe too many of them listen we are approaching the end of the show jed did you want to come in with something here before i wrap it i do david and uh thanks for everybody for coming and um i do apologize about john's 
uh, sound issues. I just want to say, David, I, <clears throat> I've had one, certainly one message reference uh, paying for the video of the live event we did uh, the other week. Well, yep. Yeah, um, I have sent that individual a message, but just in case you're unaware, guys, once you pay for you pay for the event uh, and it asks you to log back into the website, once you have done, then just go and click the video again and you can watch the video. What he, he thinks, because it's taking him back to the home page, unfortunately, he doesn't think he's logged in. He is, just then needs to click on the video and he can watch it. I've sent him an email reference to that, but if anybody else is having issues, then please remember... Pay for the video, log in, and then go back to the home page and click the video, and you can watch it uh, for the price you paid for. And that's all yeah. I want to say. No, 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 thanks, Jen. Actually, and just just on that point, I mean, it, it, oh yeah, they, they, uh, this is the uh, the video here. Yeah, yeah, that's a uh, hold the line challenge. See, I, I'm logged in now, of course, and because I'm logged in, when I scroll back down, you can see it's it's the it's just that when you log in, it sends you back to the home page. So you can then go to the content that you that you yeah. paid for. If you know what I mean. Listen, this, this is a world famous video now because that turns out to be Andrew Bridgen's last public appearance as a Reclaim MP. Hey, because no, Jesse resigned today. Yeah. And Andrew resigned from the Reclaim Party today. So that's interesting. So uh, if you want to catch him on what he was, uh, he had to say, uh, it's all in the video. Thanks to those who have bought the video. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I hope more of you will do that as well. Um, as I say, it's over. It, it, it actually lasted for two hours. Hi, Sharon, all the way in County Down. Thank you so much. Uh, Big Morgan says, get Alex Jones on. Uh, someone says Alex Jones is Welsh. I think that's Alan Jones you're thinking about. But anyway, uh, yeah. It, uh, so if you can do, if you can do, sort of download the video and, and have a watch of it. And as I say, we have we have plans uh, for for more such in 2024. Right. Well, despite our technical problems with John, which is so annoying, but look, these things happen. Uh, uh, it's been a fun hour with you guys. Tomorrow night is the audio version of this only, so it's on the podcast channel, but streaming out onto Twitter, onto Getter and elsewhere. So uh, I'll see you then at 8 o'clock. Jed's going to be with me. Uh, Paddy City Troll, Adrian, and all the gang join me tomorrow night. And as for tonight... That's it from myself and Jed. Thank you so much for sticking with us tonight. Appreciate you being here. And uh, uh, catch you tomorrow night for what will be, as I said, the penultimate show of 2023. Make it a date, 8 p.m. GMT. Be there or be, or be a lunar module. Bye.